is welcome to. Testing, testing, one, two, three. That was beautiful, thank you. Good morning. Oh my gosh, it is so wonderful to see all you all here this morning. Yes, make my day. Go ahead and make my day. <laughs> Goodness, anyway, welcome to Shining Mountain Center for Spiritual Living here in Kalispell. And we are here, um, oh my gosh, to, to celebrate the magnificence of each other as well as ourselves. We get to witness the magnificence in each person as we look around, as we smile, as we chat with them. And, and even if we don't chat, we still, we, what we're seeing when we look out is the magnificence of God in form, in unique form. So I welcome you here today. I'm so glad you're here. And um, I'll just tell you a little bit about what we're going to do. First of all, I'm going to tell you that we love to pray here. So if you came in here today and you had something on your mind or something on your heart that you would like prayer support with, um, we would be happy to support you this week in that, with that prayer. And what you would do is um, fill out a prayer request form at the back, and you, you don't have to put your name or your address or your phone number, you, but you can, but just put what it is you would like, affirmative prayer, that means prayer that we believe in, that we are affirming the truth, which is the high, higher than facts, we affirm truth which is higher than facts, so we'll be happy to support you in that this week if you would like to fill out a prayer request. Also, this afternoon after our service, we're going to have our potluck, and we love to do that, too, because we love to have um, not only the, the, um, the mind and the, the soul refreshed, but we like our bodies to be filled with refreshing things, too. So let us um, just take a moment to relax right where you are, right here, right now. And we'll start our service with some wonderful music from our musicians and go forward. I can see clearly now the rain is 
gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone all the dark hours that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day I can see clearly now the rain is gone I can see all obstacles in my way Gone on the dark clouds that had me blind It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright Bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, bright, sunshiny day. It's gonna be a bright, 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 sunshiny day. Ooh, yes. Thank you, thank you. And I'd just like to. I'd like to um, thank our musicians here. I'd like to thank Audie. We're really glad you're back, Audie. Yay! <laughs> and Jamila and Cindy is joining us today. We're so happy to have you too. Yes. And Dawn, thank you, thank you. And Licia. So we we have wonderful musicians here today, and I'm I'm really grateful. And if you are here for the first time, we'd like to welcome you. We're very happy to have you here. If it's been a while, we're happy to welcome you back. So God's blessings upon you. God's blessings upon you. Thank you for being here. Now let's move into the blessing of the children. And we know how important it is. We know how incredibly important it is for us to bless our children and who are our children? Who are our children? Yeah, it's every, it's every child that exists from this tiny to this size. <laughs> so let us bless the children and, and hold in our minds, and because we're coming from our hearts, let's hold in our minds that we are here to support and love those children which means God's children, which is all of us. But let us focus on the children that are rising up, the children that are coming into what will be um, our leaders, our teachers, our, our people who take care of us, people who are assisting us, people who are discovering things that, that are going to be so fabulous. The very things that we are living in right now and, and experiencing the, the blessing of, there's going to be more from the children who are coming up. So it, this is the time that we just focus on loving and supporting the children. So together we say, we really are 
made in the image and likeness of God. We cherish you, we support you, and we love you. And just allowing that beautiful breath of life that is within each one of us, that is moving effortlessly within each one of us, that we don't have to pull in and we don't have to hold in because it is life. Let us allow us to the best of our ability to let life flow, our, our consciousness of the life that's flowing into us and through us, life that is supporting us, giving to us and receiving from us. For we truly are, every one of us, a child of God. Every one of us, regardless of where we are, who we're with, or what we've done, or what we haven't got and what we have, we are all the children of the living God. It's expression, uniquely formed and given life. And so in this moment, knowing that we are in this sacred moment, powerful, powerful beings. Let us open our hearts to a greater degree because it is from the heart within each one of us that joins the energy of the hearts of all mankind, all beings. It is from that energy that we will experience harmony on earth, peace on on earth, shared abundance on earth, joy and forgiveness in our world. Yes, we are the children of God. We are the powerful beings created and in this moment here now on purpose with a purpose to move our humanity to move forward as humanity bringing greater love into expression And on the next breath, let us remember that we are, we are needed to complete the tapestry of life. We are needed to be the shelter for another. And we are needed to hold hands with the other. We are needed to stand together to be the greater shelter. And the greater support and the greater expression of love. And resting in this truth that exists forever, has always been and will always be the truth of one life of which we are all a part of, giving of itself to all of its creation. Let us rest in gratitude. Let us rest in peace. And let us rest as love. And together we say, and so it is. Amen. I can see clearly now the rain is gone. I can see all obstacles in my Gone are the dark clouds that had me blind. It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright.
bright sunshiny day It's gonna be a bright, bright, bright sunshiny day Again, thank you so much, beautiful musicians. Thank you so much. And now Don will um, give us a reading. We must be willing to let go of the life we plan so as to have the life that is waiting for us. In the Holmes Reader on Practical Wisdom, Ernest Holmes says, the Spirit of God is undivided in indivisible wholeness. It fills all time with its presence and all space with its activity of its thought. Everyone is an incarnation of God and a unique incarnation. All are rooted in one life. Your endeavor then is not so much to find God as it is to realize God's presence and to understand that this presence is always with you. Nothing can be nearer to you that which is the very essence of your being. Your outward search culminates in the greatest of all possible discoveries. Finding at the center of your own being, God. Life flows up from within you. A man travels the world over in search of what he needs and returns home to find it. George Moore, Irish novelist. And so just breathing in that wonderful reading, <clears throat> I um, acknowledge the powerful presence of spirit within each one of us here today, within all beings. And so now we're coming up on that busy, busy holiday season. Thursday, it's already Thanksgiving. How did that happen? And then there's Hanukkah and winter solstice and Christmas and Boxing Day and Kwanzaa and New Year's. A lot. There's a lot coming up. And it's that time of year when many of us get to go home for the holidays. Some of us look forward to it and some of us dread it. When I was younger, uh, my, my mother had passed away, my dad had remarried, and it was very uncomfortable for me to go home for the holidays until I had this awareness. I could create my own holiday tradition, and it gave me a lot of opportunity for growth. Going back to our point of origin, however, for some of us, is a place where healing opportunities manifest everywhere. Home. Healing opportunities manifest everywhere. Now, last week, Reverend Yvonne talked about the hero's journey, which is a myth. Based, it's a myth-based framework, and it's incredibly flexible. Everybody's hero journey is not the same but it has three main parts. One, the hero perhaps reluctantly starts going out on his journey, perhaps seeking enlightenment, perhaps seeking adventure. And then we have the initiation where the majority of the journey happens. The hero arrives and last we have the return. He's finished what he set out to do or she's finished what she set out to do and gets to return home. And the basic elements of the hero's journey can be found in a variety of ways. Last week, Reverend Yvonne mentioned the Wizard of Oz and Dorothy and the Yellow Brick Road. And there are so many others if you think about it. 
The Matrix, Harry Potter, Star Wars, The Lion King, The Hobbit, and on and on and on. Heroes Journeys. This week we get to talk about how to navigate what our personal trials could be and um, how to move through those issues and to grow from them. So I have a little slide here. And this is just one of many slides. If you, if you go see Dr. Google and you look, there's all kinds of slides that talk about the hero's journey. This one goes counterclockwise. And you start at home ground, wherever home is for you. And that's not necessarily your place of origin, is it? Home, home is where your heart is. Home is wherever you choose it to be. And then we have the call to adventure. Something calls us forward. And then we get to meet our guide. And that can be simply going within and meeting your internal guide. Or you actually might meet someone externally that is encouraging you on this journey. And then we get to confront our dragon, our biggest fears. And then we get to have tests and trials and adventures. And we get to have friends and allies who help us over the, over the humps, over the hard spots. They, they, they support us along our way. Next is the dark night of the soul, where we get to wrestle with those things that are difficult for us. And we get to discover the answer. And a lot of times, the hero doesn't really want to return back home. However, when they become unencumbered with their demons, they've conquered they get to return home, back to home ground. Now, we've all heard that home is where the heart is. Home is a holy, holy, sacred place, known to us and familiar. It's not necessarily a physical place. It is that heart space where we feel acceptance and unconditional love. A happy home is a place that many of us can describe. All of us, however, did not, in our home of origin, did not have a happy home. But that doesn't mean that today I can't have one. I am not, I am not held by the past. I can have a happy home. Some of us all too well know the trauma of growing up in less than ideal circumstances. The events and the bruises break our hearts as children and we carry those forward and they have a lifetime impact until, until we conquer those demons. According to the Center for Disease Control and Kaiser Permanente, there is a landmark study on what is called Adverse Childhood Experiences, ACE. The study revealed that that was before COVID, that was the number one health risk in this nation. The number one health risk. The more ACEs, the more suffering. The more ACEs, adverse childhood experience. Our juvenile facilities and our prisons are full of people who have had incredible suffering before they were incarcerated. The study said only one in 10 people have an ACE score of zero. I know some of, I, I know some of the ones that have scores of 10 or maybe even more. And I know how difficult life has been for them. I know a young man he called me collect from jail when I was a minister in Anchorage. And, and he told me his story. And, and he would be one of those with a really, really high A cigar. He told me that he had never been out of jail since he turned 18 for more than two years at a time, ever, because he couldn't function. 
he had all of this childhood drama that he was carrying with him. At the time I first met him, he was in his 30s and he was pretty desperate for change. And he came, when he, when he got out of jail, well, I got out of jail, I got out of prison, he came to a foundations class and he attended part of it and then he wandered off. Well, today he's back in jail. You know, he, he's still learning. He's still learning how to cope with adversity. Some people like him have a really difficult time with adversity, and some of us thrive from adversity. It depends upon the person. Carl Jung says, I am not what happened to me. I am what I choose to become. So what do you choose to become on your hero's journey? Some of us learn how to face adversity, and we thrive in it, and we gain strength, and we gain insight, and we gain wisdom, and we gain a new understanding. And sometimes it's just from sheer will. We don't have to let the past define us. We don't. We don't have to be victims. Part of the hero's initiation is facing those inner dragons, those inner dragons, and that is necessary for us to be able to embrace our spiritual journey, our psychological and spiritual journey, by listening to our inner guidance. Be still and know that I am God and go within. And we also have ways we can seek support through support groups, through classes, through reading, through introspection. We do not have to be a victim. Some of us may have started on our spiritual journey because of some traumatic event in our life. Now, not all of us had traumatic events, but many of us had. And perhaps, just perhaps, we encountered a test or two. Trials and tribulations. Sometimes we move on in spite of ourselves not because of ourselves, not because of our actions, but in spite of ourselves. Some of us have gone looking for qualities we are lock, lacking, and we look at others. We look outside of ourselves. We're looking at, for someone else to come and fix us. And that's not going to happen. Someone else is not going to make it better to show us, to make us happy. Many of us forget Happiness is an inside job. Ernest Holmes in Living Without Fear says, there is this question, however, which naturally arises. Why all the suffering, sorrow, and pain? Why has tragedy accompanied the journey of man? Again, our imagination may answer this question in a somewhat plausible manner. There is no other way through which true individuality can evolve. Man alone must discover himself, else be compelled arbitrarily to follow one road, in which case he would be an autom automaton and not an individual. How many of us have in the past done this because this is the way we were told it should be done? Ernest Holmes goes on to say, we may stumble, but always there's an eternal voice forever whispering in our ear that thing which causes the eternal quest, that thing which forever sings and sings. Be still and know that I am God. Go within and listen. Everything that we need for this journey of evolution already exists within us and around us. And in order to ever overcome these obstacles, we have to believe in a friendly universe. When we live in faith that life is conspiring on our behalf, do you know what happens? Life conspires on our behalf. Life reciprocates by taking us to sources and resources and people and places that bring about the highest and best outcome. You can't ask for more than that. The faith that everything is happening for a greater good. 
and that we have, all have the need to prevail develops resilience that allows us to thrive even in the face of adversity. It allows us to survive. Ernest Holmes says in this thing called life, no fear can remain where faith holds sway. Faith reunites us with the original creative spirit, the divine mind, which already exists at the center of our being. Breathe that in. Divine mind already exists at the center of your being. And it is up to us to cultivate our connection with it. It's up to us to go within. It is part of our journey. It is part of our journey. All of us have wounds of some kind or another, physical, emotional. And while the circumstances leading to those wounds may be unique, the experience of pain is universal. Everybody, everybody has experienced some pain in their life. No one escapes having any challenges, at least no one I've ever met escaped having any challenges. And, but it's how we choose to handle those challenges that defines who we are and determines how our life is going to go. It is through our personal wounds that we gain access to that inner wisdom, that inner strength that empowers and heals and blesses us. Knowing that allows us to give thanks in all circumstances. That First Thessalonians 5 says, in all things give thanks. And I have a quote here that says, Alex Korb writes in The Grateful Brain, gratitude can have such a powerful impact on your life because it engages your brain in a virtuous cycle. Your brain only has so much power to focus. It cannot easily focus both on positive and negative at the same time. Literally, what he's saying is we can't be grateful and anxious at the same time. Once again, the threat system in our amygdala is overridden. Our anxiety can be overridden by gratitude. Jamie Lula, um, who is a singer in our movement, wrote a song that says, I won't waste any, that's named, I won't waste one more minute of my life. And he tells us in this song, I have so much more to be grateful than to be sorry for. I won't waste another minute of my life. I know that's true for me. I'm guessing it's true for you, all of you. I have so much more to be grateful for. I woke up this morning. Could have been otherwise. I have a roof over my head. I have food to eat. I have friends. I have family. I have friends who care about me. Sarah Brethnock says, be grateful for the home you have, knowing that at this moment, you have everything you need. At this very moment, you have everything you need. And the Buddha said, let us rise up and be thankful. For if we didn't learn a lot today, at least we learned a little. And if we didn't learn a little, at least we didn't get sick. And if we got sick, at least we didn't die. So let's be thankful. <laughs> I just thought that was a, my husband thought I made that up. But I just thought that was a great quote. At least we didn't die. So I have a story for you from, from World War II. In Nazi Germany, during the last year of World War II, there were two young Jewish sisters who'd been separated from their parents. And they'd put it, been put into a concentration camp and into a dormitory. And the younger sister told the older sister, we have got to stay optimistic and positive. They were beaten, they were tortured, and they were abused. And as the allies moved closer, the treatment got worse. When they thought things couldn't get any worse, the dormitory was infested with fleas. The older sister complained, and she said, I don't know how you can expect me to stay positive with these fleas crawling around. <laughs> and the younger si sister said, we have to be positive, and we have to be thankful for those fleas, thankful for the fleas. I don't know if you've ever thought about being thankful for fleas. 
or for any other type of insect that should happen to crawl through. But these two young sisters survived without torture and without abuse. Well, interestingly enough, it was because of the fleas. The fleas. The Nazi officers did not want to go to their dorms because they didn't want to get bit by the fleas. Which goes to show you that sometimes we miss the blessings of our circumstances, don't we? We miss them. Other times we judge a situation when we don't have um, a full knowledge of what's actually transpiring. Be grateful for the fleas in your life. <laughs> so here we are on, on our hero's journey. We're on our own yellow brick road, spiraling upward and onward towards enlightenment. Each one of us, no exceptions. Where do you want to go from here? What do you want to do with your life? You are at choice. We are always at choice. We can choose to be a victim. We can choose to take the hero's path and, and be a hero. Each one of us on our hero's journey gets to twist and turn and wind around. And, eat, and we do share a common purpose. And that common purpose is to find the truth. Find the truth of who we are and to be grateful. We are intelligence. We are wisdom. We are compassion. We have a feeling nature. We are courageous. We are heroes. Each one of us is a hero, and we're grateful. We're grateful for the opportunity to be a hero. We're grateful for the opportunity to choose. We have the strength and the courage to persevere at whatever it is that we choose to, to do, whatever we feel drawn to. I am grateful for those opportunities. Home, healing opportunities manifest everywhere. Don't they? Ernest Holmes in Creative Mind and Success says, Never hesitate to trust that inner understanding. Never fear, but it will be right. We are in the midst of supreme intelligence. It presses against the door of our thought, waiting to be known. We must be open to it at all times, ready to receive direction and to be guided to greater truth. So, so what would it take for each of us to open, to open that door Open that door of our thoughts. Allow those truths to be known. Move upward and onward and spiral on, on our spiritual path. So this week, as we celebrate Thanksgiving, we can take that time to acknowledge all that we have to be grateful for. Put your attention on it and create more of it. Where the attention goes, the energy flows. And so what each of us get to do is we get to choose. We get to choose where we want to go, how we want to be, how quickly even. And we get to um, deal with those trials that we may encounter. And remember, God's always got our back. We simply need to go within and access that strength that is ours in each moment and to be grateful for all of our journey. So I'd like to have you repeat this after me. I am grateful for all of my journey. I am grateful for all of my journey. Thank you. Yes. There's so much good. There's so much good to be had. So please join me in prayer. Sweet spirit, that holy, powerful presence in which we live and breathe and have our being, 
God, the good, omnipotent. Huh. God who is strength and power. God who is courage and awareness. God who is health and wholeness. I am one with that. Each person here is one with that powerful presence of spirit. Each person here can rest in the assurance that God has our backs as we move through our path to higher spiritual awareness. God's got this. It embraces us, it supports us, it loves us, and it moves us forward. What I know is there is absolutely nothing, nothing outside of God. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful for that presence of spirit within each of us. I am grateful for the opportunity that we have to go up that yellow brick road. I am grateful for the wisdom and the courage and the strength of the divine that supports each one of us. I am grateful to be here. I am grateful for each person who is here. I release this word now to the perfect working of the perfect law, which always and only says yes. Please join me in affirming, and so it is. Myself in times of trouble, Holy Spirit comes to me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. And in my time of darkness, it is standing right in front of me, speaking words of wisdom. Let it be. Oh, let it be. Let it be. Let it be, oh, let it be. Speaking words of wisdom, let it be. And when the sky is cloudy, there is still a light inside of me. Shine on till tomorrow, let it be. I wake up to the sound of music, spirit sends it through me. Shine until tomorrow, let it be. Oh, let it be, let it be, let it be, oh, let it be. Shine until tomorrow, let it be.
Wow, that was beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Gave me God bumps. Did y'all all get God bumps? Wow, because, oh my gosh. What greater gift could we give ourselves than letting those things that pull at us, those things that take away from our, our, our harmony and joy and peace, what greater gift could we give ourselves other than letting it be? So thank you. That was beautiful. Thank you so much. Whoa. Let's give them another hand. Whoa. I'm so grateful. Add that to Reverend Linda's talk about gratitude, and I, thank you very much. That was lovely. And as we're moving into this this Thanksgiving time, um, you know, the holiday, it what I what I am so grateful for is that when I'm in gratitude, when we use gratitude, when we when we allow ourselves to be free enough to feel grateful, it makes forgiveness so much easier. It makes Forgiveness so much more um, <sighs> approachable. Yeah, so I'm just putting that out there. Let, and, and you can just look at it this week. If there's anything that you might feel freer, if you could forgive it, if you could let it be, let it go, lay it down, however you want us to um, put it into action, think about that. Just move yourself into gr gratitude. It is the most powerful gift we can give ourselves. Gratitude, forgiveness, the freedom to be, to let it be. Oh, my gosh. I wasn't supposed to be talking up here, was I? <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> no. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. God is good and life is good. So now let us move into that place of gratitude where we, we can recognize that we are so blessed. We are so blessed in this moment, right here, right now. And we are so blessed by this community and the community that supports us everywhere. From from all of the support we receive, we receive uh the support of time and talent and treasure, and we could not do it. Not one of us could live without the support of the others. We can't. We might fool ourselves and think we can, but we can't. And we're not intended to be. So let us just move into that space within our heart that allows us to be in total gratitude for this moment, this sacred moment, that we are grateful to be. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. And so if the ushers will become, come forward, please, let us know that we are that wellspring, wellspring of wealth. That we have that wealth within us that is joy and love and peace and prosperity and forgiveness and creativity and kindness and compassion. We are a wealth of beingness. And as we share this with our community in all, any way and every way that we choose to, we are enriched again. For there is no limit to the goodness of God. And that's what we live from. That's what we can live as. As we recognize that we are the power of God in form and action. Individualized expression of goodness. May we give freely. And may we receive graciously and know that there is always enough. There's enough love and there's enough peace. There's enough forgiveness and there's enough joy. Let us be the recipients and the givers of the goodness of God. That which we are, that which we create, and that which we share. Thank you, God, and so it is. And so I'd like to say thank you to those who joined us online today. We are very grateful that you are with us, and we look forward to seeing you next week. We hope you have a wonderful holiday, um, Thanksgiving holiday, and um, also know that you are part of our community. We're just one big community um, that exists everywhere whether we know you by name or whether you know us by name, we're all part of the village of life created by the one 
and separated by no thing. Separated by no thing. God's blessings upon you this week, and thank you for being part of our family.